I will say he does not utilize his tail to the full extent. That's what we missed in here, was more tail action. Hey friends, it's Robin. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another round of recent reads. If you watched my last recent reads, you know that it was a bit of a bummer of a recent reads. I had so many lowly rated books, but this is the redemption round because of these 10 books, other than the two DNFs, which I'm going to get out of the way right away, every single book on this list was a four or five star. We're going to take care of the two DNFs right away to get them out of the way. And then we're just going to gush about eight books for the next, I don't know, half hour. And it's going to be amazing. So the first book that I DNF'd was The Coven by Harper L. Woods. I ended up DNFing this at like 13%. Um, I read this for the vlog. I don't know if you've seen this vlog yet. Um, I filmed the whole thing and never edited it. So I read this for like the vlog that I didn't know anything about the books. And this just wasn't for me. Um, this is kind of like a witchy romance set at a school and I'm just not into the whole like dark academia thing which is extra funny because a different book on here <laughs> is witchy and set at a school but for some reason this one was just kind of new adult-esque and I, I wasn't I wasn't vibing with it um so I just DNF'd it it wasn't for me it's fine like I said I picked up for a vlog for books that I knew nothing about and after reading the synopsis, I don't think this is something I would have read anyways. No, no harm, no foul there. And then the last one, which apparently is a very unpopular opinion, so I'm sorry. I DNF to The Sinner by Emma Scott, and I DNF to this at 19%. Um, this book just felt too familiar for me. And again, I, this is like a hit or miss thing. Sometimes I really like a familiar book, but this book felt so obvious to me. And I was just like, are we gonna go through the whole book? not knowing who our heroine is because like I know who our heroine is and I don't know again there's another book on here that had the exact same trope as this one and I don't know if it's because I read that one first and then to see it again I was like I know what's happening here I just it wasn't working for me at all because like I said I kind of figured it all out right away and I was like is it because this is a little bit of an older story or am I just is it because I just read this and so like it feels really obvious I don't know it's fine I'm gonna try a different Emma Scott because I know this author is very well loved those are the two books that I, I DNF'd I DNF'd them very early on I love to DNF books it's a great time if I am not completely vibing with a book I really just, I, I like to put them down, get them, get them off of my TBR because I have no desire to push through to give it a two or three star. And I know someone's going to be like, what if it was a favorite? The odds of that are so low and I am not willing to push through all of those DNFs to get like a winner. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to read 10 books that I DNF'd in hopes of one of them being a four or five star. My TBR is never ending. I have Kindle Unlimited. It is a bottomless well of books to read. So I have I have no issue just DNFing things. From here, every single book is a four or five star. Let's start at the top. Damon by Jacqueline Osborne was a four star book. I love this series so much. It is such a good time. This is the third book in the Fallen Brothers series. I can never remember the name of this series, but each of the books follows one of these half angels, and they are all the embodiments of the seven deadly sins. This is book three, and we are following Damon, and Damon is the embodiment of envy. And up until this point, this is probably the character that we've known the least about, because his sin kind of keeps him on the outskirts. He is constantly envious of everyone and he hears envy in his head. And so whenever he is around other people, envy is always telling him things about how people are judging him or about how they have it better than him. And so he kind of isolates himself and they are trying to get the dragons to side with them in the upcoming war. And in order to get the ice dragons on their side, they agree to an arranged marriage. So one of the brothers is going to marry one of the dragon princes. The prince ends up choosing Damon, and Damon goes to Russia and ends up marrying this prince. And the two of them at first are very tentative about each other, but they slowly thaw to each other and fall in love. And this was beyond precious. I loved it 
so much. These two grow to be completely in love. This also has a like the soulmates trope in it. I think pretty much all of these have the soulmates trope in it. They're just so great. These have no third act breakups in them, which I love. There is a lot of external conflict, but the relationships themselves, once this couple is together, they are like steadfast and I just love that. And then I read Sweet Vengeance by Viano Oniomo and originally I gave this four and a half stars. I need to just up this to a five star because this book lives rent free in my fucking head and I cannot stop thinking about this book. Like it has been weeks since I've read this book and I still think about this book. It is so good. This is probably one of my favorite monster romances that I've ever read. We are following our heroine who like prior to the beginning of the book suffered a sexual assault and she wants fucking revenge on her attacker. And so she summons a demon and the demon is like, okay, so you want me to get revenge? And she's like, mm -mm, I want revenge and you're going to let me get away with it. And he's like, deal. And so she and the demon end up plotting this revenge against her attacker. And as they are exacting their revenge, they fall in love. And it was so good. It was so good. Our demon is a really like sweet demon and is just completely in love with our heroine and like all of her facets because sometimes she is very soft and quiet and kind of like, I don't want to say shy, but she has is now dealing with his trauma and he is so understanding and like willing to give her space. And then she can turn on that like revenge switch and he just loves watching his murderous woman. And it was, it's so good. I love, I love this fucking book. If you are a romance, like a monster romance reader, please read this one. Um, even if you're not, even if you're like a contemporary romance reader and you like your like steamy romances, this is a good one. And it's not like too monstrous. He does have a tail, but he, I will say he does not utilize his tail to the full extent. That's what we missed in here was more tail action. This was so good. So, so good. And I really hope that we get more books in this world. Because if I'm remembering correctly, this is listed as a series over on Goodreads, and I need this author to give me more books in this world because it is top tier. Then I read You Saved Me by Rosalind Falk, um, and I gave this one four stars. This is an MM romance, and what I wasn't expecting is this is a romantic suspense. So we are following our hero who at the beginning of the book just has like the world's worst day. He wakes up and he's like, this day feels off. Like maybe, maybe I should just go back to bed. And he ends up going to work and he ends up losing his job because of a terrible coworker who lies and gets him fired. And then on his way home, he ends up finding his longtime boyfriend in their bed with somebody else. And so he is just absolutely distraught. And he ends up staying with his best friend and she and her family have this cabin out in, I think, like, northern Georgia or something like that. Um, maybe it's the Carolinas. And she's like, go stay at this cabin for the next four weeks or whatever. Figure yourself out. Breathe. Do what you need to do. And he wants to be an author. So she's like, you can stay there for free. Your only payment is going to be that you need to send me pages, like, chapters of your book because she's an editor. And so she's like, that's our agreement. You're going to pay me in book chapters. And so he ends up taking her up on this and he goes to the cabin and he spends the first, you know, couple of days grieving and just wallowing. And then as he is like slowly like starting to come out of it, her brother ends up showing up at the cabin because her brother is an FBI agent and he just got done with this like horrible case. And so he is struggling mentally. And so he's kind of like forced to take a vacation. And so he ends up going to the cabin and they have a very awkward first encounter because one hero is in the shower and the other one thinks that there is a burglar and so he like attacks him. <laughs> so they have a terrible first encounter and then they end up like, kind of overhearing each other say some things out of context and they don't get along. But it turns out that the brother is slowly discovering his sexuality and he thinks he might be bi. And so the two of them end up having a romance. And it was really cute. It was really good. 
And like I said, this does end up being a romantic suspense, which I was not expecting and I loved about this because the case that the FBI hero was working on ends up kind of coming back around and haunting their relationship. And it was so good. It was so much fun. And this is definitely another author that I really want to read more of because I was so surprised by the romantic suspense aspect because I just didn't see it coming and I thought it was really really well done and I would totally read more books following these characters because I really really enjoy them. Then I read Something Spectacular by Alexis Hall. I absolutely loved this book. This is following our main character Peggy who has always been in love with Bella who is the twin sister in book one and Peggy is realizing that she she needs to separate herself from Bella. Bella is never going to love her back. Of course, right at the beginning of the book, Bella ends up calling them back to London and they get wrapped back up into their drama. At that point, she learns that Bella wants to wants to fall in love with this opera singer. And so she ends up dragging Peggy along to this concert. And at the concert, Peggy ends up meeting Orfeo, and Orfeo is a Castro, and the two of them have the most epic romance. And it was so good. Um, at first, they are very reluctant to become involved because Peggy is kind of mending a heart and Orfeo is a traveling artist. And so they have never been able to commit to a romance because their first love is their music. And so the two of them are kind of reluctant to start anything because Peggy doesn't want to break anyone's heart. And the two of them end up falling in love anyways. And there were there were so many good things in here. Alexis Hall always addresses gender in such an exceptional way. And this was no exception. Um, there was just, there was so many things about this book that I love. I, I don't even, I don't even know how to talk about this book because I, <laughs> I, does anyone else ever feel like a book that you really love, you have such a hard time talking about because all you want to say is that you love it? That's kind of how I feel about this book. I cried at one point. I laughed a ton in this book. Like I said, the humor in here is great. If you enjoyed the humor in something fabulous, it is still present in here. Um, it just has a lot, a lot of other topics and things addressed in here instead of just being kind of like an adventure in book one. This one had a lot, a lot of nuance to it and I, I loved it a lot. Uh, I wish I owned this book physically but I am on a buying ban right now. So maybe one day but not today. So five stars to this one. If you are an Alexis Hall fan and haven't read this one yet, read it. It's beautiful. Fantastic. And then another sequel and another purple sequel that I read was The Secret Service of Tea and Treason by India Holton, another five-star book. It was funny because as I started reading this one, I was like, is this going to be my least favorite India Holton? Like, I I don't know. Like, maybe this is going to be a four-star. Mm -mm. This book won me over so hard in the second half. So this is following this like secret agent called Aunt, so Agency of Undercover Note Takers. And the entire organization is made up of like maids and butlers and cooks and things like that. So all of these like essentially invisible people who can be part of high society completely unnoticed. So we have Agent A and Agent B. And those are the like two top agents in this agency. And the two of them end up getting paired up together to infiltrate the Wisteria Society as they are going to this like party thing because supposedly there is like a weapon of mass destruction. And so the two of them need to pretend that they are pirates and pretend that they are married and go to this party and try to stop the weapon. The two of them <laughs> have the cutest romance. I fucking adored this book. Our heroine is so strong and so smart and intelligent and very like dry and straightforward. And our hero is, I think our hero is slightly autistic. And so he takes things very literally as well. And so the two of them will like joke about things and then they're like, was that a joke? <laughs> And so it was just, it was so well done. And the way that our hero falls in love with Alice just utterly destroyed me. There is a part at the end where the two of them are kind of like taken away from each other. Um, and the ending 
where the hero realizes that he is in love with Alice legitimately made me cry. Legitimately made me cry. I ended up messaging India afterwards because I was like, that was not fair. <laughs> like, I love this series so much that I've talked about this a lot. This series is very quirky and weird and different. Super funny because all of these main characters are just completely ridiculous and out there and always saying these like really wild things. And so there are so many innuendos and so many one-liners. It's just, it's so well written and so smartly written. But this, like I said, this one totally pulled on my heart heartstrings at the end. And then all of the characters from the previous books come back together in this one. And I just, I'm so sad to see this series. I think this was like the end of this series and I'm so sad to see it end because I fucking love this world so much. But I am really excited to pick up whatever whatever India Holden writes next because I know that she is writing something new right now and I'm very excited about it. I love this series so much. If you like historical romance, definitely give that one a try. If you like fantasy romance and you want to try out historical, I also think that would be a really good one since it does have fantastical elements. After that, I started a new series and that was the Puck Boy series. So I read Egotistical Puck Boy by Eden Finley and Saxon James and I gave that one four stars. I also read book two, but I'm gonna talk about it in a second. So this was book one of the Puck Boy series. If you are at all familiar with the Finley James universe, you know that all of their books are kind of set in the same world and they're all kind of tied together. So this is in the same world as all of their other sports romances. We do get cameos from the CU Hockey as well as the Fake Boyfriend series and all of the things. Um, and this is following professional hockey players. And in this first one, we are following these two rival hockey players and they absolutely hate each other. They do not get along. They are both insanely egotistical, obviously, and they both think that they're the best and they butt heads. And of course, right at the beginning of the book, they find themselves on the same team. They had a one night stand just before that happened. And now they decide that they are going to continue sleeping together. That poses all kinds of problems. <laughs> Slowly, they realize that they misunderstood each other and all of those things. Um, there is definitely a lot of homophobia in this book, as well as in the second book. Um, so do beware of that. Um, this series, as well as their other romance series, really address what it means to be queer in such a often toxic masculinity sort of environment. And so that is addressed quite a lot in here, where our one of our heroes is closeted because he doesn't he doesn't want his identity and sexuality to take over his identity because he's like, everyone else can have a relationship and nobody cares about it. But he's like, if I have a relationship, I'm never going to be seen as just a hockey player. I'm going to be seen as a gay hockey player. And I thought that was a really interesting discussion to be had in here about what like the good that it can do to come out and be that person for other people and like the good that it can do for the sport, but also the negative impact that can, it can have on you and how you are seen and remembered about how like if you are a straight player, you are just a hockey player. You are not a straight hockey player, you are just a hockey player. But if you are a queer hockey player, you always have you always have that like predecessor of like, oh well, he's a gay hockey player, not just a hockey player. And so that was a big discussion to be had in here. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was well done. I really liked this romance. It was very over the top. Um, if you do not like a cocky sort of alpha hero not gonna be for you because they are both they are both off their rocker egotistical and it was a really good time. I also then read Irresponsible Puck Boy which I gave five stars and I don't remember if it was on their website or if it was at the beginning of the book but they classified this as the himboist himbo to ever himbo and that's what this book is. There were zero brain cells to be had <laughs> across this book and it was everything. There are no brain cells could be found in this book and I loved it. This opens up with our two main characters who have been best friends their entire hockey career and one of them is gay and the other one thinks that he's straight 
and he has this girlfriend who keeps calling him irresponsible and it really hurts him because he is he feels attacked um and so he keeps running to his best friend and of course his best friend has fallen in love with him because he is always around and the two of them hug and hang out and sleep in the same bed and they are bffs ride or die and he is trying to slowly distance himself but our other main character and his girlfriend end up having a breakup and in order to get over said breakup, he decides to ask his best friend to fake marry him at a chapel in Vegas. And the two of them are like, yeah, this, what could go wrong? And so they get fake married at a chapel in Vegas. It turns out chapels in Vegas you can get actually married at. So they <laughs> end up getting actually married and it turns into a PR nightmare, obviously. And so the two of them need to pretend to be married. And so they end up moving in together, and our straight main character ends up realizing he's not straight, he's pan, um, and that he can fall for anyone if he has an emotional connection to them, which is why he was struggling in his last relationship, because there was no emotional connection. And so the two of them end up falling for each other for real. And just like in book one, there is quite a bit of homophobia addressed in here, um, as these two are pretending to be married and pretending to be a couple, there is someone on their team that is completely belligerent and terrible, a terrible human being. Um, so do be aware of that. He is cruel and evil, did not like him. But this book was so great. And like I said, this is definitely one of those books where you're just like, this is so silly because none of these characters are thinking with their brains at any point in this book. But it was so sweet and I loved them a whole lot. And then lastly is the book that I kind of talked about at the beginning where I was like, the two books that I DNF'd, all of those things occur in this book. And that's Bewitched by Laura Thalassa. And I gave this four stars. Okay, look, the, is this is this a masterpiece, a literary masterpiece? No, 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 no. This is the epitome of one of those books where it's like, I said it's my favorite, not that it was good. I really enjoyed my time reading this book. At any point was I like, this is a well-written, well-crafted book? No, no. Um, I think that this book was tropey. I think that it was very predictable. I think that it it redid a lot of things that we have all seen, and I still I still had a good time with it. It is following our heroine who is a witch. She has magical abilities, but every time she uses her power, she loses memories. And because of that, she won't get accepted to this coven because she keeps applying and they're like, you can't, you, like, you need to use magic here and, like, you're going to keep losing your memories. How are you going to be successful here? And so, finally, she appeals one final time and they're like, if you can get a familiar and go on a, I don't remember what they call it, like a quest or something like that, we will accept you. And so she ends up taking a plane to South America and on the way there, the plane crashes and she ends up saving the plane from like completely crashing. And so everyone ends up living, but she loses all memory of the plane crash. And um, once she lands there, she starts hearing this voice in her head, like calling to her and she can see like magic because magic has color to it. Um, and so she ends up following this magic. Along the way, she meets her familiar, which is a Black Panther. And then she ends up coming to a tomb, which of course she goes into <laughs> and opens. And she ends up resurrecting a guy that was entombed there. He thinks that she is his wife. And the wife entombed him in the first place and so he wants revenge <laughs> and so the two of them end up going their separate ways because he disappears and she goes back to the U.S. and joins the coven and upon joining this coven this like magical school um the guy starts to return and people start showing up dead on campus and she assumes that it is the guy from the tomb and she keeps losing memories and people start to think that it's her killing people and she starts learning more about the guy who keeps calling her his wife, and shit goes bananas. Um, I'm sure from how I'm describing it, if you are a fantasy romance reader, you can probably guess 
where this goes because like I said this didn't this didn't have any shocking moments and it wasn't like oh my god I didn't see that coming at any point in this book at every single step I was like yeah that's what happens next yeah that's of course that's who she is but I had such a good time with this book and like I said this had the um like in the coven where I was like oh I don't like like magical schools this has a magical school. Like in the center, I was like, oh, I saw where this was going. I 100% saw where this was going. But for whatever reason, I could not stop reading. The writing in here was so readable and so bingeable. And I just had a good time. I will say, if you are a, like, if you need a, like, a really strong romance in your book, there, there actually wasn't that much romance in here. Like it's hinted at and there was a lot of like pining and things in here and like chemistry. But the two of them are like, at no point are they together. Like they're never a couple in this, like in this book. The ending is a little <laughs> dubious on the consent, but not in like a sexual way. Again, I'm trying to be really vague. Um, I'm a, all this to say, I'm a little nervous to see how book two goes just because of where this one ends. If you've read the book, let me know if you feel the same way. Um, I'm I, I'm a little nervous about where it's going to go because it could get a little iffy. But you know what? I'm going to read it because I had a really good time. That is the last book on this recent reads. Hopefully this, this round was far more enjoyable than the last one since I actually liked the books this time. Unfortunately, the next one is all over the map. I have not read a five-star book since this like round of recent reads. Um, and I have read quite a few books since then. So hopefully I'm reading two books at the point that I'm filming this and I have high hopes that they're both going to be five stars. So hopefully the next round isn't a complete and utter bust. But as of right now, I don't have a single five star on that list. And I hate that for me. I hate it. So hope you enjoyed this round. Let me know what you thought of these books, if any of these books are on your TBR. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.